You have no idea how long I've been waiting for something exactly like this. I'm not talking about the pie either. I'm talking about what this one does. Before we get into today's video, I want to take a minute and tell you about our new sponsor, Linode. A large chunk of my audience watches for the home lab and server content, but not everyone has the funds to get started or wants to dedicate an entire room in their house to a full server rack. You also have to deal with the power and cooling requirements, hardware upgrades and replacements, and the noise that comes with hosting your own mini data center. Rather than hosting your own personal cloud yourself, let Linode host it for you. If it runs on Linux, it'll run on Linode. Install your favorite server apps and services from scratch, or start with one of the many pre-configured one-click installs from the Linode app marketplace. Even if you do host your own servers, you can use Linode to keep a backup of your systems off-site. They make it simple to deploy and manage your own cloud infrastructure, with solutions ranging from a single shared CPU to massive multi-core virtual machines. Linode isn't just for businesses or enterprise hosting either. With shared CPU plans starting at as little as $5 per month and scaling up to as high as you need to go, you'll be able to find a hosting plan that fits your needs. They also have 24-7, 365 support available by phone, so you can get in touch with a highly trained professional, regardless of your plan size. That's a better support plan than I have on my personal server rack, I'll tell you that much. Visit linode.com slash craftcomputing and get a $100 60-day credit when signing up for a new account. And get your home lab up and running today. That's linode.com slash craftcomputing. And now, on with the show. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. As a former sysadmin and a home lab enthusiast, I guess you can call me, there's always been one management tool that has been just out of my reach, and that is a KVM over network solution. There are solutions like this that are out there, but often they're multi-thousand dollar units that puts them out of reach of the average person. Also, if you've ever looked at one of these KVM over IP solutions, you'll find they often run on outdated software, like an Internet Explorer 9 ActiveX plugin, or even a Java applet. Why have there been no modern or affordable solutions to this? It seems like a pretty easy problem to solve. Get yourself a PC with a video input that can also serve as an HID output device, connect it up to your server in your rack, and enjoy physical connectivity to that server with keyboard, video, and mouse over an HTML5 web browser. Well, Michael thought it sounded pretty simple as well, so he created this. This is the Tiny Pilot. It is a Raspberry Pi 4 powered device with a video input that functions as an HID keyboard and mouse to physically connect to your server and allow for connectivity over an HTML5 web browser. The best part is he has made this 100% open source, or you can buy the hardware directly from him as well as a Tiny Pilot Pro license and get a couple of extra features inside of the software. Now I know some people are probably gonna balk a bit at this price. It is $299 for what you see on the table here. It comes with a Raspberry Pi 4, 16 gigabyte SD card with Tiny Pilot on it and pre-configured, as well as your HDMI input, which uses the camera adapter inside of the Raspberry Pi. You also get a three amp AC adapter, two micro USB cables that plug into this data and power switcher, which plug into the Raspberry Pi itself. The Raspberry Pi also comes in this custom 3D printed case, which when I first pulled out of the box and examined it, I didn't think this was 3D printed uh, until I examined the maker lines on the bottom. This is an incredibly well-finished and well-printed job, so uh, kudos, Tiny Pilot. So again, for $299, you're not getting a ton of hardware, but you are getting access to the Tiny Pilot Pro license, which I'll talk about in just a second. If you wanted to set up a tiny pilot in a home lab environment where you weren't all that worried about security, you can actually buy everything you need off of Amazon and then install the tiny pilot software, which is open source and available on GitHub. Link will be down in the video description. Now, I don't recommend running the open source and free version in a commercial environment outside your home. The reason being is this is a completely wide open device which means anyone who has the IP address of this that can connect over port 80 will have access to whatever this is KVM'd into. The Pro License, which comes with every purchase of a Tiny Pilot kit, gets you access to HTTPS encryption as well as TLS password authentication, meaning that you can lock down the Raspberry Pi to only users you want to be able to access it. So yes, $299, it's expensive for a Raspberry Pi, but compared to pretty much every other KVM over IP solution on the market, this is a relative bargain. 
The specs on the device are not mind-blowing, but it does very well for the environment it was meant for, that is, remoting into a bare metal server. The HDMI input can capture up to 1280 by 720 at 30 frames per second. I was able to feed this 1080p signals with no problem at all, however it does still downsample them to 720p. The Tiny Pilot is advertised at having sub 200 millisecond latency, and I have to say I definitely agree with that. It's not something you're going to be playing games on remotely. Number one, there's no sound that comes through the HDMI either, but the latency is not so drastic that it's not usable, and it's a far sight better than any VNC connection I've ever used. Inside the Tiny Pilot, there's not a lot of surprises. There's a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, the HDMI to camera adapter, a 40 millimeter cooler fan, and that's about it. Bottom of the case just pulls right off like that. Raspberry Pi drops out, and what's left is the HDMI capture card and the cooling fan, which you can see both the cables leading to there. There is no heatsink installed on the Raspberry Pi, and I was a little bit disappointed with that at first, until I started looking at the utilization while I was using the KVM, and it was 5, 10% maybe? Long story short, you're not going to need to worry about cooling inside of this case, as uh, the KVM really doesn't use all that much processor, which means it never really gets hot. One nice thing about the HDMI capture card on the Tiny Pilot is it is compatible with HDMI to VGA adapters, meaning that if your KVM in your server rack is VGA, like mine is, you can still plug this in and get full access to it. And that kind of brings me to my one negative of this, and that is there's only one port on this, and there's no additional hardware included to interface in with a KVM switch. I think this is a great first step at a KVM over IP solution that is not only modern and open source, but is also affordable. But I think it's just that. I think this is the first step. I would love to see this built out into a true enterprise KVM solution. That is a one use switch with eight or even 16 ports that has a KVM switch on board and outputs over IP via the Raspberry Pi. Seeing as how the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi 4 is not utilized at all in this process, that should be fairly straightforward to integrate an eight channel relay board with an existing off the shelf KVM switch. Michael, Tiny Pilot, I'm assuming you're watching this. If you were to go out and get yourself a Raspberry Pi 4 compute module and build a 1U 8 port KVM that has this capability, when I was managing data centers, I gladly would have spent $1,200 on it. So please, please, please make me the 1U KVM of my dreams. But enough talking about this thing, let's go ahead and plug it into a PC and see how it works. Sorry for the weird camera angle, I'll see if I can get a B-roll shot of this to make it a little easier to understand. Right here you have your power and data convergence box. The power goes in one side and the data goes in the other. Now the data line is the USB connection to your host computer, which is able to control the keyboard and mouse. Then the USB-C cable off of that plugs right into the side of the Raspberry Pi. The only other things that are required is the HDMI from your PC and ethernet in so you can actually access the Pi remotely. So we're gonna start off by powering up the Raspberry Pi and there's a power switch on the data and power box. Once Tiny Pilot has loaded up, this is the website it brings you to. Now, as you can see, there's obviously no signal to the HDMI right now as the computer isn't on. So let's go ahead and fire up the PC and uh, hopefully use it through the web browser. If you're wondering what the monitor is here for, I'm gonna do just a little bit of latency testing right here on the spot so you can see the difference between the Raspberry Pi KVM connection and a live HDMI connection. But here we are on the Windows desktop. Uh, I do have full control of the mouse. There is some latency there, but it's nothing worse than I've used on a VNC connection before. And remember, we're connected bare metal to that box over there. I have to say for a server environment, this is uh, more than usable. So here's a video playing back through the Raspberry Pi KVM. And while yes, there is some latency involved in this, like I said, probably around 200 millisecond, uh, this is a rock solid 30 frames per second. I'm not disappointed with performance at all with this solution. Just to drive home how good this KVM is, uh, so this is the UFO test page running natively over HDMI and via the KVM over here. And obviously we're not gonna get 60 FPS, so this probably looks identical to you guys, but it's still driving 30 FPS over the network and I can control it from this PC. That's pretty incredible. And finally, here's a full screen clock with millisecond accuracy. So again, hopefully this shows there's latency, but not a lot of it. 
And I'm sure editing Jeff will throw a freeze frame in here and show the exact latency that I'm getting on this setup right here, but I'm super impressed. Hi, editing Jeff here. Uh, he's the personality and I'm the talent. Anyway, uh, he wasn't smart enough to get a wide enough angle lens to capture the full time scale on both of the monitors at the same time. Luckily, I was able to catch one single still frame with one second clicking over to the next on the KVM monitor and the other second having already advanced on the HDMI monitor. And from best I can tell, it's about 100 to 130 milliseconds of difference. Again, there is some latency in the system, but it is far better than pretty much any other remote management system I've used in the past, including a lot of IPMI connections. So editing Jeff definitely approves of the latency inside the tiny pilot. And now back to that idiot. So who would want something like this? Why would you want access to a physical keyboard and mouse over the network when you could just as easily remote into a system? Well, this isn't necessarily for remote access to manage things. This is a system for when you need to access the BIOS of a system or you don't want remote access over the network to a system, you want physical access to a system. So for example, let me go ahead and restart this PC real quick. And here we are inside the BIOS with full keyboard and mouse support. So this is something you could not do with a traditional remote desktop solution as you need to be inside the OS for a remote desktop to work. Versus this, I just need the computer to be on. The Tiny Pilot Kit sells for $299 and includes everything you need to connect to a PC remotely. It also includes a one year license to Tiny Pilot Pro, which allows you to set up TLS password authentication and connect over HTTPS, ensuring a secure connection end to end. Once again, this is completely open source hardware and software though, meaning that if you wanted to source your own hardware and install the repository off GitHub, you are more than welcome to do that. I would recommend springing for a pro license though, if you plan on running this in a business environment, as you should probably be encrypting that connection end to end. If you're interested in picking up a tiny pilot for yourself, I will have links down in the video description on where to find them. And on your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing, and if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Floatplane or Patreon. Links are both down in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today is from Single Hill Brewing in Yakima, Washington. It is the East Side IPA. A bold IPA born of malt and hops. I sure hope so. Grown east of the Cascades. Layers of citrus and tropical fruit hop flavors with balanced bitterness. It is an interesting head on this beer. It's really, really large bubbles on the outside. And then like this very, very fine foam right at the top. And it's really not going anywhere. If anything, that's a little bit malty on the nose. It's kind of interesting. That is pretty good. A little bit tropical definitely leaning towards the sweet side of things. Like I said, there. this is a really malt forward IPA, which is kind of interesting as that's usually not what defines an IPA. But I think they nailed it. I think it is actually balanced. Rather than the hops kind of leading the charge, there's a lot of malt at play in this one. Um, it's still very balanced. It's very, very good, but it's very malt forward, which is not usually what I think of when I think Northwest IPA. You know, this is just a darn good beer. I was really impressed by this one. Again, it's not your traditional Northwest hot punchy IPA, but all the flavors are still there. They're just presented in a little bit different way. Um, I really like the malt backing on this one, as they said on the can. It's balanced, it's smooth, and it's everything you could want. Go find one. Once the Raspberry Pi is powered up, you're going to open up a web browser and go to HTTP colon slash slash Tiny Pilot. Did you turn on my... you did. <laughs> so Rambo turned on my computer. Thanks, Ram.